Hey, everybody. Welcome. It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. I'm your one host, Jason Thrifts, and back in the co-host seat, Stephanie. No, I'm not from Canada. How the heck are you? I am doing great. How are you doing? I am good. How's the weather in Florida today? Actually, we've gotten kind of nice. It's only been like a high of like 78 with like a low of 50 something. So it's been actually bearable. <laughs> we had, we've had rain for two days, so not so nice here. Mm. <laughs> good to see you. Thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Yeah, and uh, I don't think I've ever been more excited to share a mug. So let's get right to our first segment. And good to see everybody in the chat, too. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Now it's time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug and try and match it up to my guest. Yeah, rain in Vegas. That's crazy, isn't it? All right, our guest tonight is Stephen Christopher. And the reason I said his last name for sure is because it's going to play an important role in my mug selection here in a second. For and, whatever it's uh, worth, it's actually not my last name. Okay, well, it still works. Don't, don't, don't. Okay, I won't ruin it. It's it, my it, middle it, name. It's, <laughs> it's your stage name. Okay, so today I wasn't sure. Look, there are no remote control rums. So I wasn't sure what I was going to match up. But then I saw you actually have a conversation with somebody on in my group today about what rum you like. And you said you mentioned a, uh, a Cuban rum. Ah, uh, yes. So no better reason than to bust out the seven-year Havana Club. Very so nice. thank you. And maybe the only time ever I will have this matchup between my guests and by pure luck, it works for my co-host, too. Okay, A, it's a giant mug. Here, I'll show the back first. This is a giant mug. So <laughs> huge. Okay, oh but here's God. why it's awesome. Oh, does it say SC? Yes, it does. <laughs> Very nice. nice. Well planned. So, yeah, I wasn't even thinking. Stephanie was an added bonus. It just dawned on me as we were prepping. I'm like, oh, Stephanie Canada. Oh. <laughs> so this is from Smuggler's Cove in... Uh, uh, um, San Francisco, and it is so big, I can't even gauge if I made a decent sized drink or a ridiculous sized drink. I mean, it's just huge. So, if at so, any point Jason falls out of the chair, we know it was too big. Be yeah, so <laughs> it looks like there's not a lot of drink in there, but I think there is. But I'm not harboring <laughs> this. Has got to be a drink for four for sure. So <laughs> awesome. All right, so we're talking remotes tonight. We all have lost a remote and needed one. But also, since we all thrift, there's ones in the thrift store all the time. And we all have a drawer with one remote in it from some VCR 20 years ago. Guaranteed. So, yeah, Stephen's going to be back to talk about that. So sit back, relax, and we'll see you in a little bit, sir. Oh, uh, what are you drinking, Steph? I, I forgot, I forgot <laughs> that. I was like, I, it's nothing terribly exciting. I've just got a uh, chocolate beer in my Guinness picture mug glass. So basically, the what's in there looks just like the picture on the glass. Correct, except it's chocolate flavored instead of like an entire loaf of bread. <laughs> and uh, you got anything exciting there, Stephen? I have water. I'm very fancy. I go right. high end, top notch, right from the tap. I got my oh, oh, oh you are a fancy Canadian tap. Right, water. no what's filter, Canadian nothing. Tap water? Even better. <laughs> awesome. All right, cool. Sit back, relax, and uh, we're gonna knock out some segments here. Woohoo! Woohoo! All right, let's do this, shall we? And now it's time for our scores of the week. These are the items that you should be on the lookout for when you're out thrifting. Okay, I'm gonna take a sip. All right. So, Oops. when in doubt, go to the sweatshirts, my friends. I was just in the okay. regular good old sweatshirt section and this was sitting there just hanging out for four dollars and 99 cents and bam yeah so needless to say i started like digging because i understand that fila and sanrio mashup that's going to be a pretty high-end ticket number depending on how rare it is Y'all, I couldn't find a single one of these that had sold in the last, like, two or three years. So after a whole butt buttload of research, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to name my own price. I'm going to throw it out there at $150. I got an offer of, I think it was $130 in the first 48 hours. And since my entire purchase at Goodwill was $140, I went, 
sure, why not? <laughs> but you got tons of good stuff that day because I you were sending me pictures and I was like, what? oh yeah, because I was looking up this sweatshirt for you too, and I'm like, can't find it anywhere, yep. and I'm good at research, and I was yeah. shocked, shocked. Nice, nice amazing. score. All right, and when in doubt, speaking of remotes, calculators can also be very, they can be a solid seller, not necessarily super high end. Now, if you're in the chat and you've had one of these, you're probably going, um, Stephanie, you undersold this because these usually sell from about 50 to 75. But for me, there was already a little damage on like the one of the screen panels and there was Sharpie all over the back of that thing that I got about 80% off of. And while it's not... It didn't affect the calculator and how it worked, but it affected like just the look of it. I was like, you know what? 35 bucks. I'm going to list it. And y'all, I pushed list. I went to go list the next thing and it had already sold. And I went, I probably pressed that too low, but I don't really care because it's gone. And look at that. A proud husband in the chat. Yep. Oh, and the calculator was $2. Nice. All right. If you are not at least perusing the like sheets and curtains section, you are leaving money on the table. This is a 1950s set that actually, I couldn't even get all the stains out of it. Like there was still some like light staining and it still sold the entire set for $35. And I picked it all up from a, I think it was the time that I crawled into the attic and she, it was so gross that they were like, just take it for a dollar. I said, great, sounds good. So sounds good. Bit, and there it goes. Attic yeah. dust. Uh, yes. And as always, I couldn't do a show without showing you a pattern. Uh, this is what? from my giant New York haul that I got like 800 patterns for. I paid $3 a pattern and this one sold. So I've had them now for about a year. All the super high end ones have pretty much sold through except for a few of them. But all these good staples I still have. So this one sold for $19 and it was in like a, she ordered like 12 patterns. So great. I love that. Send them all together on one big go. So apparently your husband has a rule. The worse it smells, the more it's worth. Actually, he's not wrong. Cause there was a Moby Dick fabric once that was worth like $150 a yard. <laughs> uh, do you know who Harold Lloyd is? Uh, vaguely. Like he's the name the He's one of the first movie stars. Uh, he was around the same time as Charlie Chaplin. Uh, did a lot of crazy, awesome stunts uh, for the day. And picked up this box set at that estate sale I went to for $9. And nice. sold it for 60 bucks. Sweet. So DVDs, which uh, Steve and I have talked about in the Secret Beach, uh, can still bring good money. All right, Stacy Sources. They took a long time to sell. Nice. But these were marked sample. And kind of like your sweatshirt, we couldn't find these shoes ever existing anywhere beyond these. Wow. So, cool. like, they never came to be. But it's kind of hard to describe them other than, you know, geometric and striped. But mm -hmm. finally sold for 60 bucks. Stacy picked them up for $8. And the interesting thing, I worked in shoes for far too long. Make sure that if you have sample shoes, you show a picture of the bottom of them. Because most sample shoes, when they come from China, have a hole drilled through the bottom of them somewhere. So they can't be resold. So just so folks in the chat know, if you do actually find a sample one, show the bottom because they're supposed to become when they're supposed to come with some type of defect so they can't be resold. Nice. Okay, even if stuff's broken or missing, this uh, uh St. Patty's Day nutcracker is supposed to be holding like a walking stick. It ain't there. We mentioned it's missing and it still sold for $72. Wow. That's and so awesome. I was helping because the the pipe isn't removable. I was helping my uh, adult assistant uh, ship it because I want to make sure that we got it out good. And I go, hey, what's he missing? Because she knows all my listings. I don't really pay that much attention, which sounds good or bad. I'm not sure. And she goes, it's supposed to be a walking stick. And I'm like, did we mention that? She goes, oh, yeah, right in the condition. And I go, all right, $72. I will take it. Nice. Plus, of course, obviously, in a week, it is St. Patty's Day. So someone wanted mm -hmm. that. All right, pick this up out of the uh, uh, Buffalo Exchange store here in Vegas. It was $12, and I was like, okay, that definitely looks older. And let me show you the tag. Uh, it's Style Auto. So Style Auto was this brand that made tons of jackets 
uh, of all kinds, not just leather, for different cars. And so it was kind of like they would just make any car that they wanted kind of thing back in the 80s. There's the logo. Mm. And uh, wow. it was a, I took a best offer of 80 bucks and it was nice and quick too. So very cool. So yay me. Yay. <laughs> but I love the jacket section, like your sweatshirt section. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. I think, like I said, I paid 12 bucks or 13 bucks. I knew because I couldn't find one when I looked it up in the store. I'm like, okay, it's leather. It's worth it. I'll, someone will want oh, yeah. it. Someone who's got like an 80s garage with their Beamer, they will absolutely love it. And now it's time for our CD and cassette scores of the week. And as always, we start with flipping cassettes. No, uh, no music this week, huh? Boo. No. All right. Do you know Tad? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. So Tad was one of the grunge bands that did not hit it big. They are probably okay. one of the first grunge bands, but as you can pe see, people still want Tad on cassettes for thirty dollars. Wow! Yeah, nice. So, if you are not looking at cassettes, mm -hmm, Stephanie, uh, you're leaving money behind. You're in the thrift store buying kick-ass sweatshirts. I know there's a music <laughs> section. I know there is. <laughs> not really. Oh, Mine's my. really tiny. Yeah, well, you got to take me Facetime me. Well, I'll go through it with you. And now we go from flipping cassettes to flipping CDs. Because then you can find cool things. Like I found this at Sabres for $1.60. Herbie wow. Hancock Prisoner, $25. Now, normally, a lot of people think that would be my good CD of the week. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Oh. That's the low end. This is a Damien Rice two-song import single. As you can see, I paid 3 bucks for it. And I sold it on Amazon for $30. But that, that's, not even, that's not even my good one this week. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so fuck the mummies. The mummies are the band, and so this is their okay. album. I used to teach use this, this actual CD as my teaching tool in my in-person classes because it's a thin cardboard sleeve, and I found it sandwiched between two CDs that if you just looked, you'd never see it. So I'm flipping through, and I see it, and so I taught that. Plus, you might think this is not legit because look at this cover. It got a little dirty. Yeah. Here's here's the insert. The here's huh. the CD. No, they decided not to pay for ink on the CD or the back. So you might think, ah, what's this? What's this? It's eighty dollars. That's what this is. Wow. Yeah, but that's no, not my best CD of the week yet. Oh, we yeah. haven't had over a hundred dollar one in quite a while. But this week that all changes. Oh, bam! Prince, nineteen ninety nine, super Whoa. duper. Now, it says I paid 70, but I I use a frequent buyer program that gave me half off. So I paid brand new at a record store $35 and sold it on Amazon for $190. Wow. These are all the things I teach in my classes. So if you haven't taken them yet, look at all that money I make on just those four CD things this week. On the cassette, too. It's but. Impressive. Am I forgetting something, Steph? Hey, wait! Hold up! Don't forget about me! <laughs> Whoops! Now it's time for Stacy's Budget Bin Scores! I was, trying, I was trying to get a sip and my straw fell in the giant mug. <laughs> the struggles are real. <laughs> okay, now usually this is where Stacy shows off her Budget Bin Scores from CDs. This was at that DVD estate, estate sale, and I'd walked past the rack that this was on many times, but Shorty... It was at her eye level, and she going, hey, isn't this like the movie we just watched? And I hadn't seen it, and I, I go, oh, well, it's the sequel. Oh, look, that's a good one. So we paid nine bucks for that and sold it for 40 So good job, honey. Nice. Good job. That's my that, that's my honey. She picks the things at her eye level, and that's that's great. When you can thrift from at 6'5 five and 5 foot, it's perfect. Yep. And now it's time for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. Okay, so is it that it was on the floor? There it is. <laughs> you know, I, I like I said, I loaded this, but I didn't really look at it. As as the graphic was playing, I'm like, oh, it's on the carpet. I didn't mean to do that. Right. <laughs> so excited. Do you want to see the graphic again? <laughs> yeah. So this was before I really, like, I was still, like, this was only... 
I think I got this from my friend about two years ago. So this was relatively, I was still new in the how to list clothing game. And so I had just snapped these photos and thrown it on Poshmark. It had a lot of like watchers and likers, but never anybody took it. Y'all, I got so tired of seeing these daggone things. I was like, okay, we're just going to bottom barrel this. I don't care anymore. Um, so I sent out offers at like midnight for 30 bucks and I woke up the next morning and this was gone. I was like, great, perfect. And then I realized later, I was like, if I would have taken the time probably to put it on a mannequin and put new with tags in the freaking description, maybe it would have sold a little bit better for more money, but it's gone. I don't care. We're, we remove, it's a life lesson. We're moving on. We live and learn. Yep. And I don't know. I, I thought when I found the, cause I found these at the bins when I was in Connecticut. I was like, yeah, FIFA World Cup. This feels right. Like it was, it was like January. So it was right in winter time. I had two of them new with, and I was like, great. I'll pick them up here in January of 2019. Guess what I still have. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want some FIFA World Cup scarves, Pirate Boyd on eBay. Yep. We'll cut you a deal. Absolutely. Please make them go away. <laughs> All right. All right. I only have one to share tonight because this is the first double dud ever. Oh, okay. Okay. So I bought it. And why I bought it, I don't know. Because it sold for $6. I mean, even if I invested two, it wasn't worth my time. So that's a dud in its own right. But guess what? I couldn't find it. And... So it's on Amazon. So I, I went back and looked at inventory and I, and I listed like 70 CDs the day I listed this one. The rest that haven't sold yet are still on the shelf. Where this one went, we have no idea. So I had to drive my ass down to the record store and buy another one for $6 so I could take care of my customer. So good oh, customer no. service, but double dud, double dud. Oh no. <laughs> now when I find it, which it'll be here somewhere, I will then sell for six bucks and break even. But, you know, the little right. asterisk is take care of your customers. I knew the record store had it down the street, picked it up and took care of my customers. So that, that's the name of the game. Yep. And Lisa says that's not even her best album. So I'm like, so I had to pay double for the crap album. Great. Ooh, that stinks. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Keep track of your, your inventory better than I did, apparently. And now it's time for Where in the World Did Our Stuff Go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential customers. Oh, how's that pronounced? Uh, you remember how we always say pr practice your pronunciations? I, I, I did not. Um, I want to say it's Saarbrücken. I That's could be right. massively wrong. Um, but yes, these two Lely patterns migrated their way to Germany. And actually, it's it's slightly a, a confusing also keep track of your inventory situation because that top one I didn't have. So I emailed the customer. We found a second one that she wanted. I gave it to her half off and she still got two patterns. So she was still happy. Nice. <laughs> now, patterns going to Germany. OK, I asked the group for help on this dress because I, I thought the dress had like a specific name. It's like a storytelling dress. Yeah. It's either like Mexican or South American Guatemalan, something like that. Mm -hmm. We kind of came to a general consensus. I bought it in Vegas. It came from South America, probably, or Central America. And now it's on its way to Corporu, Australia. Nice. So see, this is why you need to sell internationally. You never know what people need. It's crazy. Like, I would never think this dress would go to Australia. But it's on its way. That's awesome. Yeah. I, and, and I thank you to the thrifting board. We had a long discussion about what the dress is, you know, the terms. And it sold rather quick, thanks to all your guys' help. So good job, team. Woo! Woo -hoo. <laughs> and now it's time for You Have Got to Be Shipping Me. What to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. Okay, here's your graphic that Debbie made. <laughs> oh, my God, Debbie. Okay. So let's chat. I may have helped Senior Jason here with some uh, acquisitions in Florida in December of 2017. No, no not that long ago. <laughs> I'm bad. I'm not that bad. And I kept going, I'll get to this. I'll get to this. And I 
I had psyched myself out so much in shipping glassware because, hi, I sell patterns, fabrics, and clothing. I throw things in poly mailers and say, go forth, good riddance. So glassware, especially in multiple quantities, which there were three glasses and four tiki mugs, I was like, oh God, I'm terrified to do this. So when in doubt, ask your friends because it actually took, like I sent Jason photos and I was like, okay, here's what I've done. Here's what I've done. Does this look correct? So when in doubt, ask your friends on how to ship things, especially in the thrifting board. There's all these people that are here available for you. So make sure that you're asking and really getting the proper guidance to ship your things correctly. And don't wait for four months to ship things, especially to the people that you're friends with. <laughs> Just an idea. All right, quick contest. The first person to tell me what's happening on the TV wins a roll of eBay tape. Let's see who knows what's going on on that TV. I know Stephanie doesn't know. She's too young. I was like, I've got a guess, but it's probably wrong. All right, so the first person to tell me what exactly is happening on that TV, I will send you a roll of eBay tape. And I have a variety of colors. I can even give you a choice. Oh. Because I just need I need the box they're all in, and I have a ton of it. I'm like, that's the box I need for the um, uh, Nutcracker. Oh, nice. Nope, nope. So we got the guess, uh, the mask coming to America, Soul Train. Wow, I, I am stumping all of you, huh? Nope, nope, nope. Oh my gosh, I am Somebody shocked. Somebody wants you to zoom in to try and give them a better idea. All right. That is for sure not the president talking. No. Boom. Delilah's got it. Well, she spelled it wrong. It's break in. N with a little apostrophe. As uh, for the break in. But good job, Delilah. Uh, Deli Delilah. Yeah, Delilah. Send me a message on Facebook with your address, and I'll give you a choice of colors, and I'll send you a little uh, eBay tape. I thought that was hilarious. I I'm sure Debbie just picked a TV, but I'm like, yeah. why did you pick a TV with a movie breaking on it? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so uh, sold this 3XL Nua Tags Levi's denim camo jacket that I got at Marshall's for $15 for $102 to Europe. Whoa. So I said to my sister, hey, go see what it weighs. I want to make sure shipping's correct before I accept it. She goes, three pounds, one ounce. I go, shoot. All right. Hang on. I don't like this box. Two pounds, 13 ounces. So just because the first box you grab works, if you could grab a box that can shave off just that little bit to drop you down to the next pound, do it. Don't just go with your first one if it's that little above the pound. Yeah. So she was pretty quick and like, I got a better box. And as you can see, the jacket fits very nicely in this box. So don't ever settle. Sometimes you can't change it. Sometimes it is what yeah. it is. But it, but try it. Because not, not every box weighs the same. And no. this, this is a denim yeah. jacket. It ain't going to get harmed. It's not like it's going to no. break. So No. I would have uh, mailed that stuff personally. But Well, I thought that when they spent so much money, I'm like, I'm going to put that in a box. Uh, okay. Yeah. Fair. You know, that was fair. normally I would probably mail it, but I'm like, yeah, over a hundred dollars for this jacket. Yay me. But I'll, I'll, I'll send a box. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair. I'll be that good guy. And now it's time for the thrifty tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you're outsourcing. All right. When you're looking at either auctions or estate sales, uh, this is particularly an estate sale. You want to look for, th I want to call them like the periphery look. So everyone's going to be drawn to, oh, that's a sewing machine. Oh, that's from like the 50s. Maybe there'll be mid-century stuff there. And you're not wrong. But for me, what I'm looking at is, hey, I see that zipper and I see that this machine still has thread in it. So that tells me that this machine probably is working, which is great. And there's probably patterns and fabrics and all the stuff that's straight up my alley somewhere in that house, but they just didn't deem them important enough to take photographs of. I like that. Man, I would never have thought thread means it's probably still working. Wow. Oh, yeah, especially since it's a newer roll of thread. It's not an old wood spool up there, so it's not decorative. We know Tina likes it. That is sexy. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's a it's a good looking machine, and if it still works, it might come home with me. All right, so this is probably the worst news I've seen all oh, week. Yeah, and I want to thank Susan. I, I whoops, whoops, whoops. I just stole Susan's uh, post in the thrifting board, so thank you, Susan, if you're watching. Uh, yeah, so we've always told you to use the yard sale treasure uh, map that draws all the garage sales from Craigslist. <clears throat> Craigslist said buzz off to them uh, this week. It's crazy, but uh, I'm guessing, here's my guess, Steph, Craigslist is going to build their own. They're like, why let someone else use our data? So it's going to come back, yep. but just know if you're going out garage sale this week and you use that app, Nope. Ooh, They're going to try to get people so to enter their own garage sales, but it's it's not going to happen. I, yeah. I feel bad for them, but they're done. Now, I don't think they'll regret it, Angelique. I think they're going to build their own. I think they're yeah. finally for the times. So, yeah. So there is a, uh, Lori, did we find out why it happened? There is a blog to read. I've been so busy this week cleaning my house that I haven't had a chance to read it, but there is uh, content to read. So just know. Don't try and use it this weekend because it won't work for you. Yeah. That's bummer. Dear. And now it's time for our online selling tips of the week. It doesn't matter if you're selling on Etsy, Depop, Macari, Poshmark, or eBay. These are little tips and tricks to help you when you're selling. All right. First off, my husband wants me to remind everyone that he's the one that found that sewing machine photo. <laughs> good job anyway, good job so facebook recently <clears throat> despite all of their flaws in their updates there is one new update that i actually enjoy in the main search bar it's going to be up in your upper left hand corner let's say you're like me and you type in vintage patterns not only is it now going to populate groups that you're already in that you sell in the next blocks will then be marketplace to see what is for sale near you. If you keep scrolling, there will be new groups that maybe you didn't know existed for either selling or acquiring new items. So that actually the new search, the new main search of Facebook is actually a really handy tool that I think everyone should start trying to utilize a little bit more. It'll save you a little bit of time. Yeah, I, I agree. There's some new things that I don't dig, but they're always fine tuning. in. So the things I don't dig, uh, I hope they find two more, but I get that. Yeah, it, it makes it makes you find stuff a little bit easier. Yeah. Okay. When you order a, a, a item of clothing in your size and the sleeves make you look like you're Frankenstein, don't just return it. <clears throat> so I bought this from uh, Disney.com. It's 3XL Haunted Mansion uh, flannel. Oh, my God. It's my colors. It's amazing. My size. It. It's a great shirt. And the sleeves stopped about uh, about here. Oh yeah. yeah. So <laughs> so I could have returned it, but guess what? I made twenty dollars. So if you just bought some regular old tube socks from Walmart.com, return them if they don't work for you. But yeah. if you buy something that could be collectible, i.e., Disney, go back and check. So when I went back and checked, it was sold out, and I'm like, oh, nice. I'll get my money back plus a twenty dollar bill. So there you go. I was very, very excited. Nice. So my, my tip is obviously don't just return. See if you can get more money just selling it on your own. Yeah. All right. One more thing, and then we'll get uh, Steven in here to regale us about remotes. And now it's time for Unseasonably Sold. What did you sell out of season? All right. It is the beginning of March, <laughs> and someone decided they needed... Not one lot of two, but two lots of two of Halloween M&Ms. <laughs> so, because I just bought them because I thought they were tasty. And I was like, well, as they get closer to the expiration date, if they don't sell, I have a snack. And someone, <laughs> I was about to lower the price and somebody came and bought two of them off me. I was like, great, cool. So now I only have two more lots of two to go. Or I have snacks that are now capital F free. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now what I'm about to show you is not the biggest sale. It's a CD for eight bucks. But what makes me laugh is on March 8th, someone said, you know what I need right now? A Captain and Tennille later in their career Christmas CD. Wow. All I right. love Christmas music, but never once have I ever thought in any month but November or December, I need to buy Christmas music in my life. And I love it. But never in March have I ever bought a Christmas CD. Ever. No. 
I've done it I'll a few times it. in July. Christmas well, in July sometimes. I'll sell it. <laughs> I just want to ask a customer, hey, what happened in your day that you thought, this is what I need right now? Because I want to see the line, the line that gets drawn from this to that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get Stephen in here. Hey, what's this? Hey, y'all. I have a YouTube channel, too. Um, so it's it's made, it has very little to do with thrifting. It's a lot of just me being dumb on the internet, which, let's be real, that all sells. So <laughs> um, if you want to come over and join me, I talk about vintage patterns like a giant nerd, like I am. And occasionally I do, like I've started to do like trying out things. Like I did a, will this vintage one size item actually fit me video? So things like that. I tend to do things like that. And actually tomorrow night, I'm taking Jason up on his uh, idea that I got, that he gave me. He was like, you should open up some of your boxes on a live. So my ridiculous self is going to be going live tomorrow at 8 p.m., and showing off uh, part two of a giant car full of free patterns that I got. That is 8 p.m. East Coast, in case you do want to tune in. Yes. 5 p.m. on the uh, best coast over here, West Coast. Yeah, so Stephanie's got a great channel. I, I don't give a diddly squat about patterns, but I do enjoy watching Stephanie. She's very entertaining, and that definitely helps when it comes to YouTube videos, or any videos. I try. And uh, when in doubt, if you are looking for vintage patterns or you have people that are looking for vintage clothes, et cetera, you want to head on over. I finally got off my butt and listed some fabric you can see uh, to my website, backroomfinds.com. I have, oh my gosh, like 3,000 some odd patterns and a, a entire house full of fabric and clothing listed. So come on over if you would like to check it out. Uh, so uh, Lighthouse Booth, she is not in Canada. That's oh, just yes. her last name. This is her husband, Ned Canada, right there. She lives in Orlando, actually. That is correct. Right next to the mouse. Okay, so most of you know, some of you might not, my dad had surgery this week. It went pretty well. My poor mother never thought to bring her laptop. She was basically in a waiting room for about nine hours yesterday, bored <laughs> out of her mind. You know, it's one of those where they took him back. It took a while. Okay, we'll get him into surgery. Okay, we're in surgery. Okay, he's in is in the recovery. Okay, we can take him back. Like it was like nine hours. Every time yeah, I would FaceTime her, time. she'd be like, ay, ay, ay. So he's doing good. He'll good. be home uh tomorrow, tonight. I, I forget where we are in the week, but um She's got to take care of him this week, so we are going to pass on having a show this week. He's got to do a bunch of you know rehab stuff. Uh, they operate on his neck because he's got some bad uh, arthritis and, and such, so yeah. he will uh, be okay. But uh, we're going to pass this week just so they can you know take care of my dad, and then mom and I'll be back next week. She thrifted a whole collection of records, so kind of like we've done through the coffee mugs and the t-shirts. She wants to go through her records, so that's what we'll do in two weeks. Nice. Well, the only good thing is she wasn't in a hospital waiting room because of COVID. They put her in an old room where people or patients used to be. I go, is there a bed? Could you nap? She goes, no, just this dual chair. I'm like, bummer. Oh, boo. I'm like, always bring your laptop because you can always work. Okay. So on Thrifty Business next week, though, it's a return of the queen, the queen of auctions, Lynn Drawley. Now, Lynn's been on a couple of times. Lynn and I and Stacey have been friends for a long, long time. And we were just at Lynn's store. She's nuts. We all go online to sell. And three years ago, she's like, you know what? I'm going to open a brick and mortar. So two years into her opening a brick and mortar, worldwide pandemic. So we're going to talk about how she did in that pandemic with the you know restrictions and the closing down, yeah. how eBay kept her afloat, how she's doing now. And it's one of those things where if you've ever thought about opening a store, this is the night to ask some questions. Nice. Yeah. And uh, we were just at her store for her third year anniversary. So... Uh, it, it was great uh, to see that she survived because some stores and restaurants didn't. Yeah. So those that, that could true. pivot and look, selling online kept her afloat. And that's what we're talking about. All right. That's great. But tonight we're talking about remotes. So let's get our guest in here, shall we? And now it's time for the Thrifty Business Special Guest of the Week. Damn it. I got to make that longer. It's too short for me to get everything done. <laughs> Well, hey, I'm in here now. Hold on. There it is. Good guy. Every one of those things, they're just long enough so I can redo everything. And then yep. that one is like, I can't get it all. I just can't. <laughs> Hello, Steven. How are you, sir? I'm good. It seems like you guys are doing well. Oh, yeah. I got oh, yeah. a lot of rum still. 
<laughs> so, for now. Yeah, I made it too Before we start, I just want to point out, unlike Stephanie, I am actually in Canada. <laughs> and it is warmer here than it is where Jason is right now as well. We hit uh, 70 degrees today. Dang. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Sure, so. The, the world's messed up temperature wise. It's way messed up when it's 70 in Canada in March and 48 in Vegas. That's some that's a mess of crap right there. We hit a new record today, so there are exceptions to that rule. Oh man. Uh what's her store name? It is Lynn's Consignment, uh, Cletus. And Cletus is my boy, my boy Cletus here. He's the one that uh, brings me cool stuff. So good to see you, Cletus. Nice. That. All right, Steven, how long have you been selling online? Uh, I've been selling online for more than 10 years for sure. I, I can't tell you how long. Um, started in university, helped me get through university. I came out debt free, which is pretty sweet. Um, wow. But yeah, it, it was impressive. pretty nice. Long enough that uh, it paid some bills. Nice. Yeah. Uh, is that a Legend of Zelda shirt? It is a Legend of Zelda shirt. See, I, I, I'm not a nerd, but Stephanie's husband is. And I do say that. <laughs> very lovely. Yeah. If you would have given me 1,000 guesses, Legend of Zelda would have never come out of my mouth. I literally yeah, was like, a little Triforce right there gives it away. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. That's so crazy. That's awesome. Now, uh, Stephen is a big fan of uh, DVDs anime blu-rays that's kind of his collection behind him there and so yeah, we've actually Pua today as well it's very cute ah, yay Pua! <laughs> quite large i paid three dollars for him nice. i might keep him and that's <laughs> canadian so for us americans that's like 42 cents <laughs> yeah <laughs> that just means we get more money when we sell that's all that means Wow, your husband's really a nerd, Steph. If you almost got that as a tattoo, that doesn't surprise me. I, I had someone, um, uh, I got into a little online tiff last week, and someone told me that I even admitted I'm not into tiki. I'm like, that's a logo from the guy who invented the tiki bar tattooed on my forearm. I don't think you can get much more into tiki than that, really. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the 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 like, no, yeah, I win this game. Yeah, I'm a tiki nerd through and through, so I fully get it, and I embrace it. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> All right, so here's what's funny. You know, I have the Secret Beach, which is an offshoot of my of the Thrifton Board, and it's a it's a subscription based group where we do. Um, I do a webinar every month, and we have a guest webinar every month. Stephanie's up this month. We're going to talk about that later. And uh, I said to my wife, I'm like. Saturday, I'm like, I think I'm going to teach remote controls in the Secret Beach this month. And then that afternoon, Debbie, my producer, goes, hey, uh, Stephen's going to be our guest this week, and he's going to talk remote controls. And I'm like, what? Saves you some time. Well, I'm like, is Debbie got, has she bugged my house? I'm like, I, I was say, of all my have you got a Tiki work, gift from her recently? Did it have a weird extra compartment that has a new mic in it? Like, I don't even, I don't even get how that happened. Like, that's A remote so mug. So I am pivoting this month, but I but it's going to play off of that. So what made you want to say, hey, let's talk about remotes? Um, honestly, it was more Debbie than me. We were just having a chat, and uh, I, I actually watched your webinar uh, for, I think, the first time ever and saw that you mentioned remotes. And I was like, hey, Debbie, I, we've been talking, but remotes are super easy. I don't know why you guys haven't done this yet. Like, I started doing it a couple of years ago and they're super straightforward as far as finding prices for them go. And I'll explain that later. But I, we were joking. I had said that she was the book expert and she said, well, it looks like you're a resident remote expert. <laughs> <laughs> and so she asked me to jump in and uh, give a talk about them. See, and that's exactly why we want to talk about this. Cause like Steven and Stephanie and me and Scott, you have a remote somewhere in your house in a drawer, usually your drunk drawer, that you're like, oh, I think I had that VCR in like 87. But guess what? Don't throw it away. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah, I mean, a remote from the 87 would be pretty sweet. See? We have that thing and somebody's looking for it. 
I think we, you just had about as much of an excitement as you just had as like me with anyone's like, hey, I have some 1950s patterns. I'm like, yes, I'm listening. <laughs> 87 remote, yes. Right. <laughs> I, know, I totally did the face That's like cool, that. Man. <laughs> so I did a tease earlier today. If, you've, if you don't have an Apple TV, this is the remote. So when that falls in the couch, it's almost impossible to find. That's in my webinar even. Whoops, I just turned my TV on. Whoops. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy and I lost ours for eight months. And one day I'm like, F it, I gotta find this damn thing. And I'm like, I'm I'm inside the couch. You know that that scene in uh, Pet Detective 2 where it looks like a rhino is birthing Jim Carrey? That's how I was <laughs> in the couch looking for this damn remote. <laughs> Oh, uh, see, look, Lisa loses her Apple remote daily. Oh, no, Lisa. Daily. That's my wife. She loses our remote every single day. <laughs> All right. So with that, Steph and I don't do any heavy lifting because you have brought a whole presentation. Ooh. Keep it easy. Just going to sit here and drink. Yeah. So before I start, um, I want to apologize to everybody for my poor webcam. Uh, I think I've used it three times ever. And the first time I used it was with uh, my in-laws for one of the holiday COVID dinners online. And I heard it relentlessly from uh, my father-in-law saying, your webcam is horrible. <laughs> and so he actually got me a webcam uh, three weeks ago. And I tried it today. I didn't tell Jason this. I tried it today. And he said I sounded like a chipmunk. But he didn't know I was using my, <laughs> my new webcam. And it was just not worth the time to try. Yeah, I had no idea what was going on, but I saw. I said when he switched, I go, "Well, that would be fun for about a minute, and then you know, <laughs> people be like, minute fifteen of you sound like a chip, and be like, yeah, 'Yeah, I'm out.' <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I, 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 some people might find it amusing me talking like a chipmunk throughout the whole thing. Who knows? Yep. Um, the second thing, uh, I apologize in advance if I just forget a word partway through. My brain will come to it, and we'll figure it out. The whole medical thing behind that, but uh, it'll work. We'll figure things out as we go. You got this. Coolio. Cool. So remotes, um, pretty straightforward. Remotes are used for various different things. Um, they're super important, especially the ones that are obscure objects like air conditioners, heaters, um, radio systems, especially two clocks, carports. Those are the big ones because there are not many around. Uh, but TV, VCR, DVD, Blu-ray, all of those are big money as well, especially if you have those obscure models that, you know, people don't tend to buy for a lot of the time. Maybe they're really expensive, so people don't tend to put the money and investment into those. So when one of those remotes turn up, they're worth a lot more money because people need the high-end remote and they have to have it to access specific features, which we'll talk about later, but it's really, really key. Yeah, you know, when, you, when we said remotes, I wasn't, I, even I wasn't thinking like, you know, the carports and the clocks and the, and the yeah. air conditioners. Big yeah. money. Yeah. I sold a, a ceiling fan remote some time back, and I think I got like 60 bucks for it. Whoa, dang. Yeah, I was super happy. Found it in uh, one of the remote bins at a thrift store and just like, well, this is clearly not a DVD remote. And I couldn't tell quite what it was until I saw the rotation button on it. And I was like, okay. We're going to figure this out. And I looked it up and it was for an air conditioner or a ceiling fan. I can't remember. It's one of those That's two. That's amazing. It was 60 bucks. So right there I paid, I think it was 99 cents. And it just, I mean, so much profit. Oh, yeah. Absolutely worth it. Now, uh, uh, Scott said ceiling fans. We had one house where the ceiling fan had a remote. So it was so nice to be yep. laying in bed and not have to get up and go click, 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 click. Yep, mine does. Button. My, my current ceiling fan also has a light button and uh, a fan uh, button on it so you can control the speed and it's just a little too hot in the middle of the night. You pump that baby up, don't even have to get up. Pull the little nice. string. Um, so yeah, remotes are essential and they're required a lot of the time, especially for things like VCRs and DVD players and Blu-ray players. Sometimes if you want to get into those special effects, you either have to get up and push the special key pattern on the device itself, which you're probably going to have to look up for, or you can just use the remote and click the menu button. Yep. It's a lot easier, <laughs> saves you a lot of time, and you can get right to the uh, knit and grid of that remote function and get into what you need. That's awesome. So, yeah, we lost a TV remote, and it, we still haven't found it, so it's still the 
hop up to the TV and push it turned on. And then thankfully we haven't lost the where some wood smaller remote yet, but give my child time. <laughs> Last year we got a new TV and it actually doesn't have a arrow or uh, channel button on the TV itself. So if oh, we lost no. that remote, like my wife does every single day and we never find it again, we're going to have to order a new remote because there's, there's nothing we can do. Oh my gosh. That's just gonna be you got to take that pig and take your remote and rubber band it right to the pig. You can't lose yeah. it. I, I had one girlfriend some years back whose father actually bought a tracking device and duct taped it to the remote <laughs> so that if he ever misplaced it, he could go on his phone and track the remote and see exactly where it was so that he could pull it out. Oh, why do I want to do that so much? <laughs> <laughs> um, so... How do we know if a remote's working? Um, on remotes, you can see that there's a little light there. Most remotes are infrared. And so that means that they have a little signal that shoots out when you push a button. And when you push that button, it sends uh, a signal to the TV itself. It's just a general raise. And you can see right away if it's working. And there is a technique to figure that out. So when we're testing the remote, uh, generally when you're going to a thrift store, I often bring a pair of double A's or triple A's. I actually just keep them in my dashboard all the time for when I'm driving. Uh, it's just really simple. Then I don't have to carry a little fanny pack around like it seems to be coming back. And I can just pull them out, put them in my pocket and walk right in. And I have a pair of double A's or triple A's ready to go to put into the remote and give it a shot. And when I use the remote, um, all you have to do you just take the remote, you take your phone, turn on your camera, and if you press the button on the camera, you can actually see the light shoot out of the remote onto your camera screen. So right away, you know if the remote's working or not. Wow. So that really easy to trick. test in the store. You just have to shoot, push the button on it with the batteries in. If it lights up, it works. If it doesn't, put it back. I don't know how to fix remotes, so there might be a market for broken remotes. I've never tried. I've never sold one. So uh, that's just up for your gamble if you want to try. Wow. Nadine, who just tuned in, said, hey, fanny packs are in style. I have one. I haven't been anywhere that I needed to wear it, but I saw <laughs> one the other day, and I go, I like that. Like, I like this one. Stacy goes, it's cute, but we already have one. I'm like, we can't have multiples? They, they're becoming <laughs> trendy again. We have I know. a brother-in-law who more says shit. he's not a hipster. But we'll wear a fanny pack, and everything that he likes will soon become the next trending thing. We're like, you're definitely a hipster. We all know it. You know it. But you won't admit it because that's your style. Yeah, yeah they've many, been coming like back that? for like two or three years now. I used to work at the Disney <laughs> store. And oh, man, when we would get the the Japanese tourists to come into our store, if we had fanny packs when they showed up, they would be gone by the time they left. All of them. <laughs> So I knew, they're, I was like, oh they're, no, they're, they're, coming. they're coming back. Oh God. <laughs> this satchel. And, and if you want to be cool and young, you have to wear it across your chest now. That's, oh yes. That's the hip way to wear oh. your fanny back. And you can wear it on your back and just turn it around when you need it. Yeah. Yep. That's what it sets the backpack. Okay, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's way different. <laughs> yeah. That's, Come on. that's not right. Keep that up would with be that. uncool if you called it a backpack. Yeah, now how many people right now are at home looking through their camera at their remote? <laughs> how many people right now are kind of like not paying attention anymore? If I wasn't live. <laughs> so, why should you thrift remotes? Uh, I actually took some pictures of uh, some numbers on the next slide there of the uh, number of remotes that you'll find on eBay. And so I made it pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, so I searched remote under consumer electronics on ebay.com rather than .ca for my Canadianness, and almost 600,000 results appeared. Now, wow. After checking those results, I checked the ones that have sold, and I still had roughly 180,000 re remotes sold. Um, so that's roughly one third of remotes that are listed are selling. That's amazing. So they, they are a huge sell. They might take some time because not everybody's looking for a remote, but they do sell. Now I went further 
And within those results, I went a little deeper and I checked how many of those results were between $15 to $35. And I pulled up almost 48,000. Wow. And it gets better. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> so I checked what remotes were at $35 or higher. And those results came up to 57,000. So that's actually selling higher priced than lower priced. And that means 58% of all the remotes that were being sold on eBay at that time were found roughly at that price. Wow. So you can get a pretty high-end remote just by going in, checking, and throwing it up on eBay really quickly. You just take a picture of the front, the back, and sometimes, if you feel necessary, the inside of the battery container. Compartment, yeah. Just because some people might be worried about corrosion. And then you throw it on there. So a maximum of three pictures, and you're good to go. Wow, that's awesome. So, uh, where are you most likely to find remotes? Uh, here in Canada, I am very unfortunate to say that even in my city of 500,000 people, more than 50% of my thrift stores do not sell remotes. They do not wow. sell fast enough, so they do not carry them. Wow. But when you find them, you usually find a very bountiful source. And because many <laughs> people do not thrift them, you pretty much have the pick of the litter because people are coming in with all their old electronics and they do not sort the remotes usually. They just take them, they throw it in the remote bin and you just get to source whichever one you want. Oh, interesting. So when you go through, some thrift stores may have them. Uh, I have found bins full of them at flea markets and I bought bins full of them for like $20 and I get like 300 remotes and Estate sales have random ones floating around. Usually people will not care about them and they'll just let you have them for free or for a buck, 50 cents. Um, Facebook Marketplace, you can check there too. Sometimes it's worthwhile to buy electronics on Facebook Marketplace just to sell the remote because the remote is actually selling higher than the electronic itself. Wow. Uh, and then other selling platforms are also accessible too. I know you guys have... Uh, Craigslist, those are also a great list of places to look for remotes as well. Very cool. Yep, estate sales are always real good to find stuff like that. Yep. Uh, so, remotes are really easy to identify. Uh, if you look at the bottom or the top of the remote, these are the most likely places to find a key number. So, on this particular remote, uh, the number was really simple. It had five uh, characters on it. So NB150. That was the remote. It's a Sylvania DVD remote. That specific remote sold for $17. Hmm. So that was a selling price. Pretty simple. You pick it up, you buy it for a dollar, sell it for 17 bucks. Job's done. Now, nice. there are some exceptions to this rule, and I'm going to go over it right now. This is my ah. TV remote. And I bought my TV, I think, um, five years ago. This, unfortunately, has no key number on it. And so if you do not know the key number, you're going to have to do some research to figure out uh, what remote it is. And there are groups for that to do that on Facebook or even on websites, but it may not be worth your time. However, my DVD remote, which is an all-region DVD player, um, does have a key code right on the bottom here. Hmm. And I have a lower end DVD player, so my remote's only worth $8, but uh, you'll find that roughly 40% of your remotes do not have a code on it, and you may have to do research to figure out what it is. And the best way to do that is by looking at the keys on the remote itself or asking in a specific remote group to help you identify what it is. And it may or may not be worth your time. Most of the time, I tend to ignore them unless they're old. Okay. Do you have a particular, yeah. before we go on, Stephen, do, do you have a particular brand you consider your bread and butter? Uh, that is actually coming up shortly. Okay. So, right. How about this? Is this coming up? Should I just stop taking Yeah, time? there it is. So um, brands are good. So always look for brand names like Apple, Sony, uh, Bose, etc. However, Sony is so popular that they also have lower end DVD players and TVs which means you're either going to hit really, really well, or you're going to hit really, really low. So if your remote doesn't have many buttons on it, it's probably not a very good remote if it says Sony. 
Whereas if it has more buttons and words on it that you do not recognize, it's probably going to be a higher end remote and you'll want to look it up. So it's just, it's a lot of looking for the key buttons on a remote and the characters on the remote rather than the actual name brand itself. But obviously those name brands are going to be worth money. So if you see Sony, just pick it up, take a look right away. Um, finding out what those buttons on a remote do. For example, I talked about my ceiling fan earlier. If it says swirl counterclockwise or swirl clockwise or turn up the fan kind of deal, that's going to be a unique re remote. So you're going to want to take a look at it. Um, a lot of remotes also are stronger and more durable. My remotes right now are lower end. I'm not rich. And so if it feels like you can throw it against a wall and it will shatter, it's probably not a higher end brand. But if it feels really heavy and clunky, like you could step on it and it won't break, it's probably really good. <laughs> uh, same with the texture of the remote. A lot of the time, if they have a curvature to it and it's really thin, it's probably higher end. We saw Jason's Apple remote earlier, and that is one of the more popular ones. If you find an Apple brand remote, while it might not sell a lot because they have a very limited product there, it's still popular, and so it'll sell fast. Um, nice. Same with unique systems. You always want to look for those. Uh, screens on remotes are also very big. If your remote has a screen, it's probably going to be worth money. In fact, the ones with screens that work are going to sell for quite a bit. So if you find a screen, hmm. make sure you always look it up because they put in that extra effort to put in a little tiny screen on there to actually show you a diagram for something to give uh, a product to your just handheld convenience. So it's going to be worth quite a bit of money. Uh, things to avoid. And while this isn't always true, it is often the result. So universal remotes, a lot of people just went to like Dollarama to buy universal remotes. So there's just an influx of them. If you find them, it might be worth checking out if they have special buttons, but usually I just avoid them. Same with satellites. Uh, they're also very general uh, because everybody was pirating satellite back in the day. So everybody had a million of those pirated satellite remotes. Uh, if they don't have many buttons, I don't usually worry about it too much unless it's specific to a unique brand of ceiling fan tools, medical devices, things like that. Um, also, most TV remotes are not usually helpful. Uh, there are just so many in flux that they're not great. But if you see again that it has lots of extra bonus buttons, it may be worthwhile just to check out. Bonus buttons. I love it. Bonus the one buttons, thing that I was always told was uh, sleep number, like because sleep number sometimes has a detachable remote for their mattresses. That was right. the one that I was always told to keep on the eye out for. So, yeah. And that's one of those unique remotes, right? It's, it's not something like a general TV remote that you would find. Sleep number would be kind of unique for a specific, a specific niche, right? So of mm -hmm. it's not surprising that that would be one of the preferred remotes. How about like uh, the old Zenith remote where the, the, the word clicker came from back when I was like seven where it was like four buttons and you would push it down and then you hear a big click. So I don't want to make any jokes about your age, <laughs> but if you were seven, I mean, it may be worthwhile to take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. It's fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the delivery was perfect. That was amazing. <laughs> it, it was kind of open for that opportunity there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Um, anyway, sales. Sales. Over. sales. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's pretty basic. We mentioned um, some Sony remotes. As you can see, while it looks like there might be a lot of buttons on there, there's actually like a whole bottom to this remote that's just completely open. So they clearly haven't filled it out. Um, I would say this is lower end. As you can see, eBay also says it's lower end. It's pretty common, but it did sell for $13, which for some of you may be worthwhile. If you pick it up for a buck and you can get a quick sale of 13 bucks, not so bad. Um, yeah. 
This is a good question. Is the return rate low? Uh, no. I've never had a return on any of my remotes well, ever. So, so the answer is yes, not no. Yeah, you oh. don't get returns. My apologies, yes. <laughs> so I've never had a return on any of my remotes ever, and I have sold between 100 and 200 of them. Nice. Wow. All right. And it's pretty straightforward. If it works, it works. If you need to show a small defect on it, which doesn't usually matter, like as long as it works, people are pretty happy about it. Oftentimes the edges might get a little scuffed from people dropping it on the floor and whatnot. But if it works, people are okay with it. Um, all right, next one. Uh, this is pretty common. I think a lot of people have seen this remote. Uh, it's Apple TV, pretty standard for second and third generation. Uh, this one actually sold for a lot cheaper than it normally does. They, they tend to go for usually $15 to $20. Um, and businesses you still use these. My school uses these. Um, if you have an Apple remote, it's always worth picking it up as long as it works. They sell really fast. Uh, normally, I say remotes take a long time. But Apple has a very generic standard remote for most of their products. Um, Pick it up. If you can get it cheap enough, it's always worthwhile. It's always a quick sale. Grab it as long as the price is right. Hmm. All right. If you've learned anything tonight from Stephen, and we're not done, but we have a lot of people watching live, and thanks, everybody. Good to see you. And uh, I know we, I know people watch after the fact. I know the president was talking tonight, so if you're watching that and you watch this uh, on record, cool. But give, give Stephen a big old thumbs up. Give Stephanie a big old thumbs up. Give my too big of a drink a big old thumbs up because it didn't look like a big drink. I just told my wife, I think I'm drunk. Is it gone? Is it almost <laughs> empty there? Oh, it ain't gone yet. And I got to go home. Oh, and then you out. can't refill it. I know. Yikes. What's the point? Yikes. All right. Uh, this is also another Sony remote. Uh, pretty straightforward again. As you can see, there's more buttons. They even have a little circular dial on this one just to make it a little more fancy for you to scroll around in the menu. Uh, so you can see that it's a little bit more uh, button-tascular, I guess would be the <laughs> proper word for it. Sold for 20 bucks, nothing fancy, but it's getting up there. button uh, Next one. That needs to be like a t-shirt. Uh -huh. My button remote. Vascular. <laughs> uh, the next one is a Bose remote. Um, so this is for a music system. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller. Not many buttons, as you can see, but it is name brand. And so it does take on some sales. As you can see, it went for $18. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Jason. All right, um, we're still getting up in the value now. I'm just going to maximize my screen here just so I can read a little bit better. There we go. Uh, so this is for a five-disc CD remote. Um, so now you're getting yeah. into stuff that's a little bit more unique because everybody has a DVD player. Everybody has TVs, and most people have Blu-rays at this point. So, But not everybody has a CD player because a lot of people are just using YouTube. So when you want your specific remote for your CD player, you must have it. And therefore, it is a little bit more uh, uncommon for that remote to pop up. And so in this case, this remote went for just over $24. And it had corrosion in the battery compartment. And somebody That's still amazing. took it. Yep. That's amazing. So they said they cleaned it up and it worked. Um, but it did have corrosion and they still got it. And sometimes if you can clean it up, which I have been able to do... Uh, you know, you might as well go for it. Yeah. We had a clock at my old work that we were like, oh, it just stopped working. It needs new batteries. And our lighting tech opened it. They're like, no, your batteries have exploded. <laughs> Let me fix that for you. I guess it did need new batteries. It did. They weren't it's wrong. A whole other <laughs> <True. reason. laughs> All right. Oops, oops, oops. Um, another Bose remote. So we're getting into some more. Uh, unique things again. So this is for a Cinemate GS series. I don't even know what that is. Uh, <laughs> if anybody else knows and wants to post in the comments, feel free. But uh, we're getting into some now. more unique stuff on a name brand. So here we have another unique remote, and the price has gone up. They've already sold one in 24 hours. It was used, and they got 35 bucks for it. Wow. Yeah, I'm pretty Here's sure that's a surround sound remote. It's surround sound. Is that what it is? 
I think so. Uh, somebody just asked, will it sell without the battery compartment? Um, oh. It probably depends on the rarity of your remote. If it's higher end and you can give a little bit of a discount, somebody might not care. Because I know when I was growing up, people lost the battery compartment all the time and they would just tape it. Yep. That's yeah, what I'll just say. That's what duct tape's for. Duh. Yeah, you, you just tape the back, and when you want it off, you get the uh, hair dryer out, clean off the tape, put in new batteries, replace the tape. So I would say, yeah, it shouldn't matter if you can get it to work and it's rare enough, or you can provide an adequate discount for sure. Give it a shot. All right, another nice. Apple remote. I think this is the one that Jason was showing earlier. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is open box, so it is technically new. Uh, they sold six of them, forty bucks. Oh yeah. So if you find those Apple remotes, especially if they're current, uh, always pick them up. It's always worthwhile. It doesn't matter if they're new or used. They are always going to sell, and they are good money all the time. And they're usually like a buck. That's really cool. Yeah. So because you can't test them, do you just say untested? I mean, we can see the light on. There still could be issues beyond that. So if the light comes on, it's because the functionality inside the remote is working. So theoretically, if you push all the buttons on the remote, there might be a button that sticks. You're Normally, you can tell if the button is not going to work if you can see there's grime and grunge all over the remote. Because there's okay. nothing that's going to inhibit that from working. So if the light comes on, you're usually pretty safe. Again, I've sold well over 100 of them. I've never had any issues with the light coming on and there being uh, problems with any buttons. Uh, if you see an issue with the button, try and clean it. Uh, if you can't, I guess that's on your decision whether or not you want to try and sell it. Just make sure people know that that button may not work. Yeah. Yeah, just be honest. Disclose it. Yeah. Um, so Pioneer. Oh. Now that's yeah. familiar. <laughs> <laughs> so multi-cassette changer remote. Since we were talking about cassettes earlier in your uh, wins there, a lot of people might have a multi-cassette changer from Pioneer like this one. And they are older remotes. So a lot of them just ended up in the dump because people are like, oh, this is old. Nobody's going to need it. And so they just become out of fashion. So while there are not many buttons on this remote, you can clearly tell by the uh, graphic art of it and the squareature of uh, the remote itself. Um, <laughs> Such new words tonight. I love yeah, it. I, I'm, I'm great with words. Um, you can clearly tell that the markup will be there. So if you can see that it's older, always look it up. It is most likely going to be worth your time. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the one my parents had for their uh, for their cassette. entertainment system. <laughs> yeah. So here's our universal remote. I told you to avoid hmm. them, but I did say one thing about looking for something particular. What is that one thing that we're looking for right now? Does anybody see it? I see it. Do you I see, see it? it? It's pretty straightforward. So I always, <laughs> I always said to look for anything with a screen. So while this is a universal remote. It is going for $49. It's a little bit fancier. So you get the price markup on there. It can control everything else. Uh, so I would always say if it has a screen and it works, it comes on, go for it. This one is particularly working with Blu-ray player on there. I don't see what else it is, but I mean, it's clearly modern. It's got the screen going for it. Just pick it up, check it just in case. And then if it's good, send it out. Nice. All right, a Bose remote. Huh. We're getting up in price here. So uh, this says GSX Series 2 and 3. Uh, so it's a music remote. Uh, as you can see, the buttons are completely laid out. It says Bose right away. I would check it. The fact that it says Bose would be my first thing. The fact that it has buttons going from top to bottom. Uh, and the controls at the top are sheer giveaway that it has some uh, fancy mechanics in there that I'd like to check out. I would always check this out. Uh, 75 bucks straight away. Uh, that's an wow. awesome remote for sure. Dang. All right. 
has the word rare in the title. That's uh, not the <laughs> best use of your words because I'm sure whoever's looking for it is not looking for the word rare. However, uh, Pioneer, it's a remote control for a CD player. Again, uh, a lot of people don't always have CD players at this time. So if you are looking for a CD player remote, you have to get it on eBay or it's at least somewhere else that is a secondary source. Uh, this remote in particular, as you can see, it has an extra lip in the uh, top there. So it's built a little fancier than most remotes. It's not just a flat uh, rectangle or an oval shape. So that right away, if it has that uh, gift of different uh, manufacturing there and how it's designed, you definitely want to look it up. Uh, so this one went for 80 bucks and $8 shipping. Wow. Damn. Whoa. All right. So this oh is my. a little bit more unique. Uh, this is a TV remote. However, uh, it clearly has all the buttons and dials that you would not normally see on most remotes. Uh, I believe on that middle part there, that is actually like a touchpad like you would have on a yeah. laptop so that you can control the screen itself with your finger. Huh. Um, so it's a little fancier than most things, and they sold 110 of them, uh, all used for $85 <laughs> and $12 shipping. So keep that in mind when you are looking for things. If it has a touchpad on your remote, uh, there's clearly something very special about it. Uh, this is just a TV remote from Samsung, but it has a touchpad, which is something I have never seen. So keep it in mind. I would absolutely sell 110 of those. Yes, please. <laughs> right, yeah. No kidding. I think I heard Ned's car just leave. <laughs> <laughs> Got to check gonna for remotes now. <laughs> going to wait in line All at right. the right now. <laughs> uh, Logitech Harmony Ultimate One Universal Remote. So again, mm. this is the same kind of uh, universal remote that you should look for. If it has a screen right away, that is something you want to look for. Uh Notice at the bottom, we've seen a few remotes with this color pattern. There's red, green, yellow, and blue. Yeah. This is more of a modern thing, so you know it's newer if it has those colors on the bottom. A lot of the time, it is specific to uh, channel changing or app changing. I know my remote is like, one's Netflix, one is for, uh, uh, what's oh, it called? Yeah. Prime. And so you yeah, always want to check for that. It tells you right away if they're modern or not. But... If it's modern and it has a screen, that means it's a lot more high tech because they've put in the graphics in there to coordinate uh, what it can do. Yeah, hotkeys. Yeah, that's yeah. a great word for that. But also, can we just take a second to go, who was paying $20.40 for an expedited shipping of this remote? <laughs> Probably somebody in Canada who can't afford right. the shipping. <laughs> My goodness. Shipping in Canada is insane. Uh, Locally, if I were to ship that remote in Canada, it would cost me at least $12. Really? Yeah, can Canadian oh shipping is atrocious. That's uh, the worst. If I'm Actually, shipping if across lucky, the country. Your last name. That's all you got to be lucky about. Because, yeah, shipping. <laughs> even if the I were to ship that remote across the country, it would cost me about $15, $16. Wow. Doesn't I know. It hey, our, like, that's exactly right. Look Canadian real good shipping, right eh? <laughs> All right, so we're getting into oh, bigger wow. money. Again, we have another touchpad on this Samsung remote, and it is different. Uh, however, this particular one is a little bit fancier, maybe newer. I'm not actually sure, but for $135, somebody was certain that they had the right remote for their product. And if I had a remote that was $135, I would sell it right away. I would not need it for my device. <laughs> it yeah. would be worth having the money for that uh, remote for sure. Right. Just TV. TV remote. Oh, That's what it was. What? There's a uh, yeah, this one's a little bit fancier. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows what this is. I do. I actually had to look it up after. Uh, this particular remote uh, was used for boating. So it's Whoa. a random boat remote. And I'm not entirely sure what it's for. I've never owned a boat. <laughs> I've never been in the deck of a boat. But it is a remote for a boat. So go figure. 
<laughs> uh, they sold 21 of these and they have eight left and they have sold them for two hundred and eight dollars and forty five cents. Oh, my gosh. So, wow. When someone is throwing out random junk out of their garage or donating stuff in their box, these will turn up. The most expensive remote that I've ever sold was one hundred and fifty dollars uh, and wow. they, they happen. So keep it in mind that when you're looking, if there is a screen on it and it looks like it's not for a TV or a DVD player, you should just pick it up anyways and try to find a research group who will help you identify that remote. Yeah. Worst comes to worst, you're out a dollar or two. Yeah. And it's worth the gamble. Best value, so, you're selling remotes for 200 bucks. So Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's going to be worth it. You will always make money on your $2 remote no matter what, how low it is. So yeah. just pick it up. It is worth the gamble. Yeah, and with 58,000 people on the thrifting board, you pop in a remote. I guarantee you there's a minimum of 10 people who have that remote and know exactly what it is. And they'll know what it is. Yeah. 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 And everybody's scrolling through their Facebook and everybody wants to be helpful. So if they can answer your question, they'll be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Final tips. Uh, somebody asked about uh, condition. <laughs> Two dogs. Nice. I'm in his group. <laughs> A um, sorry, condition. So it doesn't usually matter. Uh, I think I mentioned this before. As long as it is not extreme, sometimes you'll find remotes that are splitting down the seam. If that is the case, unless it is one really rare or fancy remote, I'm not going to sell it. It's just not worth the time. It's not worth the money. Someone's going to find one and they're going to want to have it complete. Yeah. So I would just not touch it and I'd leave it alone. Uh, when possible. List the units your remote can be used on in your title. So a lot of those remotes that I showed you, they had some units specified on there. Those are the units to the DVD players or the Blu-ray players that they can work with. Oh, okay. And so while you don't need to research that a whole lot because people just kind of steal titles from each other, you'll know right away which remote works with what because there are remote dealers. That's how I figured out. You can look it up if you want to be justified in your research. Uh, there are remote groups that will tell you if you put in your remote key, it'll tell you right away what uh, device that'll work with. But it will work with those devices, and people won't know the remote code. So if yeah. you want to sell to that specific device, you should have the device name in your title. Yeah. So that That's the key seller right there. I mentioned this earlier, if you're having trouble identifying your device, join a Facebook group geared to identifying remotes for assistance. There are also websites. You just have to Google them. They're pretty straightforward. They'll pop up. Uh, sometimes you can even take pictures of your remote, send them in, and they'll know right away. I don't have them on me right now. I stopped thrifting for a year until uh, Tuesday because I just recovered from surgery. Uh, so yay for going back. Just had a $90 sale before starting, and nice. that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> but... Definitely look for those groups. They are always helpful, very useful. Um, the community of resellers and thrifters are always out for doing that. I don't know if there's any remote collectors out there in big quantities, but I'm sure they exist and uh, they may be able to help you too. There's a collector for everything nowadays. There is a collector <laughs> for everything. That is very true. Uh, no, I am no, not a remote guru, uh, despite what Debbie may say. But if you have questions, do not hesitate to send me a message at any time. And I'll do my best to assist you. See, now I have this picture in my head of, of my DVD. Uh, I mean, DVD. Why did I say that? Of my Tiki mug shelves, but just someone who's got all remotes all stacked up on their shelf. <laughs> and little glass boxes hung up on the wall. With this their is the rare 1962 little used. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they exist. They they definitely exist. Oh, absolutely they do. Uh, all right. Now, uh, that is not all, all. We got to do your scores real quick, and then we'll send everyone off into the evening. Uh, where did I lose your scores at? Hold on. There they are. On a different screen. Okay. Stop screen. Share. Share screen. Uh, uh and ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Ooh, there we go. Woo. So because I'm in Canada, you'll see a little C in front of uh, all of the pricing. This, this is in Canadian currency, which according to Jason is probably worth $40 right now. 
<laughs> no, no, that's uh, twenty-seven fifty-eight. I I can convert oh. that quick. <laughs> uh, so this uh, little set here was one of my recent sells. Um, I started selling right before my last surgery, uh, so about a month ago. Uh, so everything you see might not be my highest scores because those are all deleted as of a whole year ago. Yeah. But these are recent sales, I guess you could say. I actually sold right before my first surgery was a uh, a snow globe from Disney for a thousand bucks, and I was very proud of that uh, forty dollar oh. purchase on Facebook. Damn. But here are some recent sales. I do a lot of DVDs and Blu-rays, and a lot of Disney and anime and other nerdy niche things. So, uh, yeah, Secret Life of the American Teenager DVD season volume. Uh, it was good condition. Um, I think I paid $20 for the full set on Facebook Marketplace, uh, went out, brought it home along with a whole bunch of other things, and I got 160 bucks for it right away. It's pretty sweet. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, this action figure uh, I bought on eBay. It's not the best picture. I actually bought a new... Uh, screening for my pictures coming up, but I'm still waiting for it to come in from China, uh, of course. Uh, but however, I found the Bioshock Big Daddy limited edition figure for $20 in an auction that was mislabeled in the category. It was actually labeled in video games. And nice. I bought it for 20 bucks, sold it new for 117 Canadian. Uh, so quite a bit of hefty profit on there, which was great. Wow. And, uh, what um is this the kind of thing you collect or you just knew it to grab it to flip it uh i actually don't collect action figures okay. um i just know a lot of nerdy things and was like hey this action figure looks fairly unique and i just took the time to look it up i was like there's no way this is worth 20 dollars and so i thought it was intriguing enough to take a look at it, it just happened to pop up in my feed and I found it, bought it. Nobody else bid on it. Uh, I also got a few other things, which I didn't list. They're sitting off in the corner there, like a Gwen Stefani doll. Um, and I uh, threw it up on there and got some good money for it right away. Uh, anime. I just talked about it. So there you go. Uh, I bought this for $3 at a uh, pawn shop, actually. Uh, a lot of time, pawn shops just buy blu-rays and dvds and they don't check them whatsoever uh blood sea was one of them they actually had this for ten dollars i think it was eight years ago when it first came out um i had it uh for only a few days and put it up for 100 bucks i think i took a best offer around 85 for it i don't know off by hand but it doesn't say there very wow. nice things i don't know of blood sea yeah, nope. Uh, here's another anime. <laughs> this is another $3 purchase. Or actually, I think this was a dollar purchase. I think I got this one at a yard sale. Uh, I bought a whole anime collection at a yard sale. The guy said he didn't want his anime anymore because he wanted digital copies. And so I was happy to oblige and uh, move forward into that. Um, so he, he sold them for a dollar? Like, he what? sold all of his movies and DVD sets for a dollar each. Uh, I did quite handsomely on that. I'm still selling some of the stuff. In fact, uh, one of the things I sold uh, yesterday, I think it was, was uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which I paid a oh, dollar yeah. and I got uh, 65 bucks for it. Sweet. So, yeah. Uh, I'm sure I've made well over a thousand, maybe even two thousand dollars off this guy at this point. So it's Damn. pretty sweet. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know. Is yeah. there another one or no? That, that was it. Okay, I actually bought uh, just yesterday another DVD collection from somebody four hours away, and uh, I paid 350 bucks for it. He shipped them. They should be here this week, but it had the complete uh, release edition of Simpsons and Futurama, all the extended editions of Lord of the Rings and Hobbit, yes. uh, various animes like Miyazaki, things like that. I should get about $1,500 once it's all sold and done with. So. Wow, Wait, Stephanie! Didn't he tell us he does, he hasn't thrifted in a year? It sure, sounds like he's thrifted. I said up away. since Tuesday. Oh. It's after Tuesday. <laughs> I bought this yesterday. <laughs> he's that he's not the day. Time. <laughs> exactly. That was after Tuesday. I know my days of the week. Do you? <laughs> At the bottom of this room, and I don't know shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, well, thank you, sir. That was awesome. I and I know everyone, it, those of us who are going out to source this weekend are gonna be looking for remotes. You're gonna be on a state sale going, you got any remotes? You got yeah. any remotes around here? Stay in touch. I want to see what you guys get and what you sell. It'll be sweet. Absolutely. Look at that. We got uh, uh, we're all connected tonight. This is crazy. That's awesome. that's exactly one of the collections that I got. It was a part of that set, was the Miyazaki collection, and that's about 70 bucks for me. So I mean, right there, that covers a huge chunk of it. The Simpsons I can sell for 500 So that in its own will just chip it off. I also got the Breaking Bad Blu-ray in the special set. So I'll sell that for 120 130 bucks. Ah. Yeah, a couple of VHS that are good in there. Oh, wait, oh, VHS too? Good gosh. <laughs> yeah. Complete so Jaws series. I'll get 30 bucks for those. Yeah, how, how much did the shipping cost on that? Uh, so I paid two seventy five for his collection, and the shipping because Canada, uh, yeah, two seventy five for his collection. Uh, like I said, the the Simpsons alone will be five hundred bucks. So already I'm great, and there's two hundred Blu rays which I didn't even mention on there either. So it's just added bonus. But okay. um, we left out the the, uh, the shipping will be was sorry ninety four dollars Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Three different packages, so they'll all come in at different times, of course, too. Of course. Of course they will. Of yes. course. But very exciting. Yeah, Stephanie sent me two packages, and shockingly, they stayed together the whole way. Like, they ne they never left each other's side. I'm being they hopeful. I don't want to drive out and pick them up at the post office, because they never drop them at my door, ever. They're they're not helpful. But uh, <laughs> likely, oh, can Canadian shipping is atrocious. I'm sure some Canadian here can attest to that. Um, but hopefully... I'll be around and I'll just be able to sneak up in there and grab those right away. All right. Awesome. Well, good luck with that collection. I hope they show up nice and timely. Uh, Steph, Thanks. good luck tomorrow night with your live. I Thanks. highly recommend tonight doing a live practice one. Don't be your first thing, the legit one. You always got to do a practice one. When I did this show with StreamYard, we had a couple of practices where we were just kind of screwing around making sure we knew what everything was because you don't want to get live to your legit thing and be like, ha, ha, buttons. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I've done, I've done two test runs, but we might try one more just right beforehand just to make sure. But I do it live where, where people can bop into it. You know, when, today it was just me in there looking at you guys. So yeah, do a live one. Let people just wander in and check out, see what's going on. You'll, you'll never know what new viewers you might get. Oh, oh, that's dangerous. Maybe. Maybe we'll see. I'm already yeah. nervous about this whole thing anyway. It's well, let me know if you're doing it later. I'll pop in. I'll pop all in. Right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Dog's getting eaty. All right. We'll, we'll end on the dog. So, heck yeah. <laughs> Look at that cuteness. Ooh, so uh, cute. bo boy or girl? Girl. And what's her name? The white picture out. Uh, Juniper. Oh, so oh, sweet. Wow. With that, we'll end on Juniper. So, thank you everyone for tuning in live. Good to see you. Those who watch after the fact, love you just as much. Don't forget to give uh, Stephen a big old thumbs up down below. And if you've not subscribed, subscribe and click that little bell. Bell lets you know we're going live. And if you haven't gone over, <clears throat> hit up Stephanie Canada's uh, page on YouTube and give her a little subscribe too. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Smugglers Cove. And, uh, See you later. Don't forget, no show on Sunday. Mom's taking care of Dad. But we'll be back here on Thursday next week talking to the Queen of Auctions. Lynn Drowley. Bye, everybody. Great. Bye.